Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan. I'm a homeschooling mom to six kiddos ages 12 and under and five of them are actual homeschool age. In today's video, I'm actually going to be sharing five tips for homeschooling multiple ages. Now, I have done several videos about multi-age homeschooling or multiple kids in homeschooling, homeschooling with babies and toddlers, all of those different things. I will try to link some of those other videos in the description down below. But as I said, today I'm specifically going to be sharing five tips for homeschooling multiple ages. Now I'm going to try to start off simple and then get to probably one of my top things to share with you all. But overall, I hope that this video just encourages you other mamas who are coming here looking for tips and tricks. And also, I would love to hear some of your own tips and tricks. I'm only going to be sharing the five main ones that I came up with when I was kind of pondering it the other day. But there are so many more that you could share and so many more ways that I could expound upon the five tips that I'm sharing with you today. The first one that I I want to share is to choose a set time to homeschool. So that is one of my five tips because that is a tip that I have found super helpful in our own homeschool. So we've been homeschooling for nine years now and I started homeschooling when I had four little ones all under the age of five. I actually started homeschooling because I had taken the year off after having our fourth child from teaching public school and for my own sanity wanted to provide some more structure in our home and so I used a very gentle kindergarten curriculum and stretched it out a year and a half for pre-k into half of kindergarten. So that was my first step into homeschool mom world was with um, four little ones all under five. And I found it so helpful to add structure to our day by setting apart time specifically for our homeschool day. Now, this can vary based on families, based on your needs. There are lots of things to consider when setting aside time. Um, some schedules are very irregular because you may have some kiddos who might need to go to a therapy or to tutoring or something like that. Or maybe you're part of a co-op or there's any variation of things that could change that. But it, you're still able to at least set some sort of routine and time of day that your family sets apart specifically for the purpose of homeschooling. And I have found this just to be very helpful in creating just a more structured atmosphere that encourages sitting sitting down and setting time to actually learn and get some school done. My second tip, I talk about quite often on my channel, whether it be that I'm sharing a day in the life or another video like this or sharing about a specific curriculum that we're using, but utilizing family subjects. Now, some people, especially if you're new to homeschooling, may not really understand the concept of family subjects. I know a common question that I have gotten is, well, why would my middle schooler be learning from the same curriculum that my second grader is learning from? Simply put, <laughs> there are subjects like science and history in particular that they are the same basic structure to them, the same basic um, time periods that you're learning about and things like that, or even events in history, people groups, things like that. And each year that your child gets older, you just go at a deeper level of learning. So what's great about history specifically, we have found it very helpful to use what is considered a classical history cycle, meaning that it is set, history is structured into four time periods, ancient, medieval, early modern, and modern era. And you just go through that cycle and then cycle back around just at greater depth. So what ends up happening is if you are able to find a curriculum that utilizes that cycle, it works out very, very well for a larger family. Some, some curriculum examples for history are my father's world offers a family cycle. 
story of the world offers a cycle to their history. Also, BiblioPlan, which is what we choose to utilize in our family, and I've got lots of videos on BiblioPlan. Mystery of History is another one, and there are some other ones as well, but those are some different histories that you can utilize from the time that they are in young elementary all the way through middle school and sometimes even high school. And so I have found that really, really helpful to utilize those family subjects. As far as science goes, an example would be Apologia. It is designed for kindergarten through sixth grade, which works out really, really well, um, especially because once your child gets to seventh grade, if you are using Apologia, they then move to independently doing their science, and they have structured that curriculum to work through that independent learning. So how does it work with science? It's kind of the same thing. Your child is learning the same basics of science throughout their time in school, just at greater depth. And the way that Apologia is designed, if you are not familiar with their curriculum, with their um, science curriculum, you will notice if you ever get the chance to look at it, it is a lot of information. And some of it, you think, how in the world is this pertinent to a second grader? Um, but it is because they are going to glean what they can from that subject on their level. And it's more about the exposure at a younger elementary level to those subjects. And then they learn it at greater depth when they go back through a little bit older. So, family subjects are definitely something that have been helpful here. Like I said, we use it for history and science, but also for Bible. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is to consider curriculum that fosters independence. And this goes along kind of with what I was just talking about. I gave an example with Apologia Science and the way that it is set up. I could also say the same for our history. It does have a high school component that you can pull in if you end up doing biblio plan with high schoolers as well. And that can be done more on the independent side. And so it works well as both as, you know, together as a family, but also independent. But what I mean more specifically is if you are trying to homeschool a lot of kids, especially at one time, you may find it very difficult to divide your time and to have a school day that isn't going to last literally all day long. So if you are choosing like a math curriculum that is very teacher intensive to teach and a reading curriculum that is very intensive to teach, all of those things, like you need to consider those things because if that is what you're choosing, you are going to be spending pretty much all your day homeschooling. It's going to feel very cumbersome as you go throughout your day. So for me, I we choose to use Christian Light for math, and I have found it to be a great curriculum to foster independence. Uh, the way that the student pages are made up as they get older, it has more and more information in their student pages so that they can independently read through it, and I'm just there to facilitate or answer questions that they may have or help them with greater understanding if they're not really getting it by reading it themselves. So that's an example. I know a lot of people utilize teaching textbooks. That's another great one if you are wanting to foster independence. Now, obviously, this is, this also has come in very helpful for me because I do have a child who has dyslexia and requires more hands-on teaching time from me, especially for reading instruction. And so it has been very helpful for me to foster that independence in some of my other kids who can be a little more independent with other subjects so that I can devote a little more time to instruction with my son who needs that. So that's really important to think about as well. My fourth tip to think about is having a plan to either entertain or redirect 
little ones. So as I stated, I have a three-year-old and he is a very, very busy three-year-old. Last year, I had a preschooler and a toddler running around. And then before that, I had a toddler and a baby running around. So I have, I definitely understand those kinds of scenarios. Um, and having some sort of plan in place is really helpful. Obviously, we cannot plan for everything, especially when it does come to our little ones because they can be very surprising sometimes. But having things like some busy bins on hand, which I actually did a video on that a while back, and I will link that down below in the description if you're interested in that. But something like that can be very helpful. Also, just having that understanding in place that you are going to have interruptions. And it's not always just with your little ones. Sometimes it's with your kiddos that are school age as well. But just having that mindset in place that you are likely going to have interruptions and thinking of how you can deal with those interruptions and keep the rest of your kids and your homeschool day on task. So that's something really important to consider and think about. The very last thing, and I think this is the most important overall, is to have realistic expectations for your homeschool. What does that even mean though? What is a realistic expectation? I think sometimes we see perfect curated views of what homeschool is. We, even if it's just a picture, of like this perfect, beautiful homeschool. But what you don't see is if that picture were to put be put into play motion, you don't know what's happening next after that picture that you're looking at. So having realistic ideas of and expectations is super, super important. Not looking at others for what your homeschool should be, but really evaluating what is important to your family and your family dynamic and um, setting your expectations accordingly. So, you know, I spoke at the beginning of the video setting aside time for homeschool, and I mentioned things like therapies or tutoring or, you know, those things. You know your family. Your family may have to consider those things, and that feeds into the expectations of what your homeschool is going to be or should be. Um, so to have a viewpoint of, you know, going and having this full, um, beautiful homeschool day, but then you forgot, oh yeah, we have tutoring today at one o'clock and that's going to be right in the middle of this wonderful grand idea I was going to try to execute today in our homeschool. Well, keeping in mind as you're planning the realistic expectations of what can happen in your home is going to set you up for more success than feeling defeated and like a failure. The realistic expectations also goes along with what I mentioned about having a plan for little ones um, and planning accordingly. Like, don't pick this full hands-on curriculum if you know for a fact that you can't handle the craziness of a toddler getting into everything when you're trying to do it. So it's that kind of stuff, having realistic expectations. Um, even things like planning what curriculum you're going to use. You don't want to over plan and then have all this extra stuff that you're trying to do all the things and your homeschool and your family is just not conducive with that. So having those realistic expectations, stepping back and really evaluating your heart where is your heart in the situation? Is it trying to keep up with what you are seeing in others' homeschool? Is it trying to plan outside of what your children even are capable for based on their different stages of developments or personal abilities? And so that is probably my number one tip, but I left it here for the end. Now, ultimately, overall, as mamas, we have this amazing opportunity to homeschool our kids. And I know for me, it's not only an opportunity to just school my kids, it's an opportunity to disciple my children and to really try to cultivate their hearts in order to love and follow the Lord. And, you know, I mentioned in my top tip you know, practical tip being that, but I guess really, um, 
what goes along with those expectations is where our heart is. Because if we're not evaluating our own hearts and what the heart behind our homeschool and our home is, and realizing if there's something that we need to address in our own hearts before deciding on what those expectations are, it's just really important. I hope that you guys found encouragement in this video. And as I said in the beginning, I would love if you would share any of your tips down below. If you want to expound on some of the tips that I have shared. Obviously, I did mention a few different options for like homeschool curriculum and stuff. Those are just some things that came to mind as I was sharing examples. Those are not do this or else kind of things. But I do hope that it was helpful. And if you have any questions, put those down in the comment section below as well. Thanks so much, guys, and have a very blessed day.